Hi, it's Kyle from Bytewing Games, and today we're learning how to play Aquamarine. Aquamarine is a game for one or more players, designed by Matthew Dunstan and Rory Muldoon, and it's being published by Postmark Games. It is a print-and-play roll-and-write, so you'll print the game off and be playing within minutes. The point of the game is to win, and you win by having the most points. Points are scored by diving underwater, exploring the ocean, discovering underwater creatures and objects. Throughout the game, all players will select one of the two numbers shown on the dice and create a square or rectangular box, showing which areas of the ocean they are exploring. After three dives, or 24 turns, the game ends. Let's take a look at the setup. Print off your sheet, grab two dice and a pencil, and you're ready to go. I laminated my sheet just to make it reusable. One player will roll a single die. Whatever value is showing, mark that associated spot on the 24-hour track. All players will begin marking off the 24 hours, or turns, at this point. So what will you be doing for the 24 turns? Each turn, one player will roll the two dice. Each player selects one of the two numbers and draws a square or rectangle in that shape. You're diving, so clearly you have to start a dive at one of the three boats. So if you selected a three, you could go here, or here, or here, or here. All paths must be square or rectangular. So a 4 or a 6 could be more than a single straight line. There is one exception. If you roll doubles, you will draw any shape you want, but it must be too larger than the number you rolled. So if you rolled double fives, each player would draw a shape covering seven spots. That could be this, or this, or this, or any number of other shapes. To discover more, it clearly seems better to take the larger of the two dice. But, since you're diving, you are limited by your amount of oxygen. If you select the larger of the two numbers, you will lose air equal to the difference between the two dice. So, if I select this 6, I will lose 3 air. If you select the lower number, or if the numbers are equal, you do not lose air for taking that die. Throughout the game, you will go on 3 dives, indicated by the 3 tanks of air. So, once you run out of air, you will resurface and start another dive. So let's take a look at what a dive looks like and what the rules are for placing your shapes. Like I said, each dive will start in one of the four spaces below a boat. Each turn your next shape must touch the previous shape you drew. Diagonals don't count, they must be orthogonally adjacent. Continue diving and exploring, marking off an hour after each turn, and reducing your air if you choose to take the higher of the two dice. Once you've reached a certain depth, your air will start to deplete each turn. If your shape is in the negative one level, reduce one air each turn. Same for the minus two air level. There are a few air bubbles to discover. If you enclose an air bubble, do not lose any air this turn, even if you take the higher number die. Once you have run out of air, you will start your second dive. You are able to spend over your air limit. So even though I only have two air available, I can still take the four, even though that would have required three air, plus two more air for my depth. I just cross off my remaining air, and my next turn will be my second dive. Your three dives cannot overlap or touch one another, even diagonally. So this is not allowed. After 24 turns, the game ends for everyone. It's also possible to end the game early, by using up the oxygen on all three of your dives. In that case, you'll just sit out for the last few rounds. A few points of clarification. What do you do if you roll a number you can't place? Say you roll a 5 and a 6, but neither will fit next to your last placed shape. You can skip a turn, still losing air for being below the negative 1 airline. However, at any point you can choose to end a dive. After rolling the dice, you can choose to end your current dive by crossing off any remaining oxygen in that tank. Use one of the two dice to begin a new dive, starting in one of the spots underneath a boat. Okay, you know all of the rules for placing your shapes. So let's jump to final scoring. At the end of the game, you will score for enclosed objects you have discovered. Jellyfish are of course bad news. Lose two points per jellyfish you've enclosed. Coral comes in two varieties. Coral will give you one point per coral, but only if you encounter just one type at a time. If you enclose two types of coral in a single turn, 
cross off the coral to remind yourself you do not score for that coral. For the butterfly fish, the more you enclose together, the more points you earn. And each player map has all of these detailed at the bottom. You can score for one flag per dive. So if you enclose both of these flags in a single dive, you just earn six points, not 10. So you can score for up to three flags, one for each of the three dives. Stingrays and cuttlefish each give you five points, but stingrays can only be discovered during the 12 day hours. Cuttlefish are similar, but only score if encountered during the night. So if you encounter one during the day, cross it off so you remember not to score for it. Last but not least, beacons. Beacons score in pairs. So to score, you have to discover one during the day and one during the night. Each set of day and night beacons are worth 15 points. The last objects to discuss are shipwrecks. If you fully enclose a shipwreck, you don't directly score points, but rather you immediately select a bonus to score for. The bonuses are extra points for cuttlefish, coral, flags, shipwrecks, beacons, and stingrays. Again, those are detailed on your player map. You are now ready to dive into Aquamarine. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Until next time.